Does fluid move into or out of capillaries? Starling forces refer to the forces that govern whether fluid moves into capillaries, called reabsorption, or out of capillaries, called filtration. This diagram lets you explore how the Starling forces vary over the length of systemic capillaries. When these forces are thrown out of balance, as in the disorders shown here in addition to the normal state, fluid may accumulate in tissues and cause visible swelling known as edema. You can use the slider to see how the net force for fluid movement varies over the length of the capillary. You can also tap CHF, or hypoproteinemia, to compare those conditions to normal. Let's go over some interesting aspects of Starling forces in systemic capillaries. Capillary hydrostatic pressure, shown as CHP, is the pressure in the capillaries due to the force that the blood exerts against the walls of the capillaries. Capillary oncotic pressure, shown as COP, is a force due to proteins in the circulating blood that act to draw fluid into the vessel. Representative values for typical systemic capillaries, for example, skin capillaries, are shown in the diagram. CHP pushes fluid out of vessels. COP acts to pull fluid into vessels. These values we're showing represent the forces inside the capillary. There is also hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure outside the capillaries in the interstitium, but for systemic capillaries, these values are usually small, and we can safely ignore them in thinking about filtration versus absorption. Glomerular and lung capillaries behave a bit differently, and we're not talking about those here. The amount of fluid filtered out of the capillary is proportional to the difference between the pushing force, CHP, and the pulling force, COP. You can see this as the difference between the CHP and COP lines on the graph. The black arrow also shows this difference for any point along the capillary. The COP stays relatively constant along the capillary because almost none of the protein can cross the capillary wall. The CHP falls along the capillary because there is a pressure drop along the capillary proportional to the blood flow and the resistance of the vessel. If you adjust the slider, you can see how the net force varies along the capillary. For the normal case, the net force favors filtration at the proximal arterial end of the capillary and favors reabsorption toward the distal venous end of the capillary. Overall, there is still usually slight net filtration considering the whole length of the capillary. In the normal case, the small amount of excess fluid filtered is easily carried away by the lymphatics. Notice how the ankle is not swollen. You can still see the normal contours around the lateral malleolus. You can tap CHF to see how the forces differ for congestive heart failure, abbreviated CHF. You can toggle back and forth between normal and CHF to see the difference. The main difference is that in CHF, depending on the severity, venous pressures may rise, and you can see this reflected as a higher CHP at the venous end of the capillary. Looking at the graph and using the slider, you can see that filtration is favored along the entire length of the capillary. The extra fluid filtered in CHF can overwhelm the ability of the lymphatics, and fluid can accumulate in the interstitial tissues. This is seen as swelling called edema. You can see how the ankle swells and loses its normal contours when you go from normal to CHF. You can tap on hypoproteinemia to see how the forces differ for conditions, for example certain renal diseases where a great deal of protein is lost from the blood. As for CHF, you can toggle back and forth between normal and hypoproteinemia to see the difference. Like CHF, filtration is now favored over the length of the capillary. But unlike CHF, where this change is due to an increase in the pushing force, CHP, here the change is due to a decrease in the pulling force, COP. Like in CHF, the extra fluid filtered in severe hypoproteinemia can overwhelm the lymphatic drainage and lead to edema. You can see how the ankle swells as you switch from the normal state to hypoproteinemia.